Hi, I'm Dante Greco for Bionic Buzz, here at the U.S. premiere of The Inventor. It's a story about Leonardo da Vinci. It's stop-motion animation. I'm hearing incredible things. We've got a lot of great interviews for you to watch. Please remember to like and subscribe to Bionic Buzz on YouTube and all socials, and we'll see you on the carpet. Alex Mandel, how are you? Composer, uh, tell me, what did you draw inspiration from to compose the music for this film? Well, we, um, the first thing is just for my friend Jim Capobianco, the writer and director. Um, his passion about Leonardo da Vinci was infectious, and so I started saying, well, I better learn more about him. So I started reading all the biographies and learning more about this fascinating character. And, uh, and he loved music, Leonardo da Vinci loved music, and you start learning more and more because Leonardo da Vinci had so many interests in art and science and the human body and music and you know, astronomy. And so it was very inspiring to learn about him and to learn from Jim and then to create music that hopefully reflects some of that inspiration. How would you describe the score in terms of, you know, the feeling of it? Well, we, it hopefully alludes to the time that Leonardo lived in. We listened to Renaissance music, but then in discussions we thought, well, part of what we're trying to do is to make Leonardo accessible and to show that he was ahead of his time. And so, as a result, there's different styles of music. There's music that sounds, you know, from the 1500s. There's music that jumps ahead 150 years. And there's music that sounds contemporary. Whenever the ideas feel more new, the music follows along. I love it. Last question. Was there anything interesting you learned about Leonardo that you didn't know before? Well, yeah, actually, it was about Marguerite de Navarre, who is played by Daisy Ridley in the movie. Leonardo would have met her, there isn't much documentation about her, but Queen Elizabeth carried one book with her everywhere she went through Elizabethan England, and that was a book by Marguerite de Navarre. So she was this uh, original Renaissance woman, if you will, that I didn't know anything about, and Jim found her and started digging deeper, and it really helped the story, because now Leonardo, his, his counterpart is Daisy Ridley, Marguerite de Navarre, who is a real person that is lesser known. All right, Christopher Knight, the legend, we're here for a film about another legend, Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, first of all, how do you feel about da Vinci? Legend, a true, a real legend, and a supposed one. I think I'm just a lifer. It's a new title I accepted this morning. Uh, yeah, um, a, a very important um, individual in our history. Um, so it's an honor to be able to present a movie about him, and then to do it in such a fashion is a testament to. Uh, well, the creativity that's in the mind of Jim uh, Capobianco. So. Absolutely. What do you think about it being stop motion animation? How cool is that? I mean, it's fabulous. Uh, who's, not, who's not a fan of Rudolph the Red Rose Ranger and that whole kind of genre? Um, and it's nearly a dying art, so bring it back. You know, it, there's always room for that which preceded the most advanced or the most modern in the way of technology so it's really um, heartfelt I gotta ask have you seen or are you planning to see any of da Vinci's paintings in person uh, oh yeah whenever whatever I mean I'm big on museums whenever I get out so you know if I get to traveling again uh, which I haven't really done much I'm not, certainly not internationally not since COVID um, I will look for Leonardo again Last thing, uh, what do you think about that Brady Bunch house selling? 3.2 million. Sort of relieved that it was, you know, I, I, I believe that uh, Tina, as she's quoted uh, as saying, it's it's really not an investment. It's it's um, livable art. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a home that is itself a sculpture, uh, you know, and collected like one. And that might be the right way to frame it and the right purpose for it. Now, Hoping that the neighbors are given to, you know, nonprofit gatherings there at the house because that's a perfect use of it if, if they're not opposed. Have you been there lately? Uh, I drove by just the other day, but just drove by. I haven't been inside. I under, There's been a guard at it this whole time. So, so um, but now at least maybe through her, others will get to see it. But it's not really a house to live in. It's a house to remember in. 
Real last thing. I know the strikes are still going on, but do you have anything coming up you want to talk about? Any uh, any projects in the pipeline for eventually? Of, uh, the, the inventor, which uh, former Prodigy Media is one of the producers on. So that's our production company, Phil Biardo and myself. We also released this week uh, in, on Wednesday uh, to streaming on video on demand. The uh, the film that, we, that we've been crafting for the last three years, the documentary, True Love, the film, which we're very proud of and uh, very excited about uh, having others see so that they can be made aware of William Syndrome and also um, the heart that is in our star and others that suffer from William Syndrome that are, are, are I think alive to prove to us or to show us again how to relate to one another and how to love one another. That's great, thank you so much. You're very welcome. With Jim Capobianco, the director and the writer and the producer of The Inventor, what drew you to the story of Leonardo da, uh, Leonardo da Vinci? Well, you know, <coughs> Leonardo is so magical to everybody and the, his breadth of thought and intellect and all the things he was interested in. And he seems like a, he's a genius, right? And he's up on a pedestal. But I wanted to tell a story that was more human and brought him down to our level and so that people could relate to him in a way uh, in their own lives, in a sense. He had had to have a boss, he had to get paid, he had trouble with his apprentices. You know, these are struggles we all have, and I thought that would be really interesting to bring him to life that way. Not the crazy wizard, you know, but more a real person. Right, so that way people watching him and his example could feel like, oh, I could aspire to actually be that. That's exactly right, yeah, so they could think, wait, maybe there's a little Leonardo da Vinci inside of me. Maybe they won't be interested in all, all these things, but maybe there is something they're really interested in that they could find a passion and, tr and pursue, especially children. You know. Now, you made the very interesting and cool decision to make it stop motion animation. Why did you make that choice? Well, I always thought there's two art forms in animation, stop motion and drawn animation, that are handcrafted. And I thought a movie about Leonardo da Vinci should be made in, in the handcrafted art forms. There, you know, a stop motion is engineered with a skeleton. It's made with metal. It's, it's a physical process. And uh, drawn animation, obviously, with Leonardo's drawings and the 2D animation uh, seemed a perfect fit. So both of those together just was right. That's the way to make it. And if I could ask, what if and what was the most interesting thing you found out about Leonardo da Vinci and his life that you didn't know before? I didn't know before. Uh, well, uh, let's see. Well, you know, oh, well, I think the thing I learned the most was, and I, I hope this is true, but that he would have known Marguerite de Nevers who was this amazing renaissance woman in and of her own right, and Daisy Ridley speak as voices her in our film. Uh, she was amazing, uh, uh, like equal in a sense to Leonardo da Vinci in some respects, and we, she helped me make my movie, really, make the story come to life. Brilliant, well congratulations, thank you. Thank you so much, it was really fun, appreciate it, thank you. Okay, Kat. Welcome, uh, how are you doing? And uh, tell me, what was it like to be a line producer on a film like this, an animation film? A lot of people probably aren't sure what that experience is. Well, I spent uh, 14 months in France and I never did learn French, sorry to say. But uh, stop motion crews are uh, one of a kind. We work at 24 frames per second. We build everything by hand. It's all a very handmade, very Leonardo da Vinci style. Um, we made a lot of his um, actual machines in the film. Did you guys feel the spirit of Da Vinci while you were making the film? Absolutely. A lot of people don't know this, but Leonardo uh, died in France. He passed away in France. So we were we spent the last three years of his life in this movie in France. So it's very uh, very poignant and very heartfelt. And what would you like audience to audiences to walk away thinking after they've seen the film? Um, I think there's a big message at the end. It's a, sort of a moral of the story is to just. Um, and find out what you're looking for inside and then um, share that with everyone, the knowledge of your um, what's true to yourself. Beautiful, thank you so much, congratulations. Thank you. All right, we're here with Mercedes Blanche. How are you doing this evening? I am good, how are you? Excellent, so are you excited to see the inventor? Yes, I am very excited. Um, I'm just glad to be here and to support this animation. Are you much of a fan of Leonardo da Vinci? Yes, <laughs> yes I am. I'm European, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I figure, yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's a, like part of just growing up, right? Yes, yes. What do you like, the Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, what's your uh, favorite Da Vinci piece? I'm going to be cliche and go with Mona Lisa. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Good one. Have you seen a stop-motion animation film in a while? That's that's what the uh, the film is tonight. 
Not yet. This is going to be the first one, but I'm excited to see it. Absolutely. Are there any lessons uh, from Da Vinci's life that you may have learned over the years? Any inspiration? Um, just uh, no, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, can I ask what do you have coming up? Is there anything, and where can people find you? Um, on Instagram, and there is this show coming out, Robin Hood, which I was um, medicine. I played medicine, and I'm excited for that. All right. Well, thank you so much. Enjoy the film. Thank you so much. You too. How are you doing, Mr. Minkoff? I'm well. How are you? Excellent. So what drew you to this story? To this story? Well, it, it was really my friend Jim Capobianco, who uh, is, the, is the inventor of the inventor. And uh, I'm here to support Jim, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing his film. Um, did you, were you a big Leonardo da Vinci admirer prior to this? Did you learn a lot? You know, it's interesting. I've actually, I, I have worked with Leonardo da Vinci as well. So uh, he made an appearance in my film, uh, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, from, from a few years ago. Uh, and so Jim and I obviously uh, uh, have had this wonderful and rare opportunity to work with one of the masters. Uh, did you give him any advice while he was directing and, and producing? You know what? Um, I don't know. I often give people advice, and not not that it's ever wanted. But um, Jim and I go way, way, way back. Jim uh, was a storyboard artist on The Lion King from you know a few years ago, and uh, you know I've always been a fan of his work, and uh, so I'm excited to uh, to come and you know support the film and and my friend. And uh, I just wanted to ask, what do you think about his choice of stop motion animation? I think it's fantastic. I mean, I'm a big fan of, of all kinds of animation. I love stop motion. I've never done it, but uh, I'm very excited to see what Jim's done with it. All right. Do you think we could see a resurgence now? Because everything, we've gone, we've run the gamut now. CGI, traditional animation. Time to bring back the stop motion. I think so. Well, you know, there was a film that came out recently, which uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, I think, which was also stop motion, which was fantastic. And of course, Henry Selleck is a wonderful practitioner of stop motion. and. We love Henry and his films, and uh, so I think uh, stop motion is a great art form, and I think more should be done, and hopefully will be done. That's awesome. Thank you. Enjoy the film. Thank you very much. A pleasure to meet you, and tell me about how you came to be involved in The Inventor. So my name is Robert Ripberger, and I really got involved with The Inventor even before there was a script. Uh, it was a number of years ago, and it was just an idea of, to make an animated film, particularly in stop motion, about Leonardo da Vinci that you know could uplift and look at the meaning of life, but also be entertaining for kids. Were you much into uh, Da Vinci or the Renaissance period before making the film? I certainly knew enough about Da Vinci, but that was also the fun of making the film, is there's really so many layers to him in geology, in art, in music, and every step of, of, of the way it was like, I, we just kept finding more layers, and, and he's really a, a quite a dynamic person. Most people know him through the Mona Lisa, but in this film, you really, you really find so much more about, about the man. And what would you like the audience to walk away thinking after seeing The Inventor? I'd really love the audience to be more connected with each other, to you know, appreciate the art, to appreciate the right way of life that's captured. I mean, Da Vinci really had you know, a, a philosophy and a way of life that was quite unique. And that's also what we wanted to you know, bring forward in the film and share with audiences. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you.